everyone, uh, my name is Moaz and uh, I, along with Steve and Helen, will be presenting uh, about uh, the GPU nodes that we have on uh, the Perlmutter system. <clears throat> so first, an uh, outline or overview of this presentation. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the GPU nodes, their uh, hardware configuration, and uh, then we'll move on to the type of uh, programming environments that, is, uh, uh, that, that are available over there. And finally, we have some hands-on exercises, which are self-guided uh, set up for you. Uh, but before you start working on them on your own, I'll do a quick walkthrough to them. And there are several concepts that are being explained there that are new to these nodes and were not available on the query system or are, are available on the Perlmutter CPU nodes. So I'll try to uh, walk through them uh, with some examples. And uh, once we are done with that, you can try uh, you, you know you can try them on your own because if you do, you learn better. <laughs> So uh, the GPU nodes, uh, so we have about 1500 GPU nodes on the Perlmutter system. And each of these nodes contains uh, one AMD Milan CPU. This is the very same CPU that is also present on the uh, Perlmutter CPU nodes. Uh, the difference is that on the CPU nodes, we have two of these and on the GPU nodes, uh, we have one of these. Uh, each uh, Milan CPU has 64 uh, cores, where each core uh, has two hardware threads. So uh, for the scheduling system, uh, it will see a total of 128 compute elements, uh, CPU elements on each GPU node. <clears throat> Along with that, we have the distinguishing factor is the GPUs. Uh, we have four uh, AMD A1, uh, sorry, NVIDIA A100 GPUs. Uh, and uh, each of these GPU has 40 GPUs of HPM, the high bandwidth memory. Uh, and is capable of performing up to 9.7 teraflops of uh, floating points, uh, the double precision floating point operations. Uh, and uh, each pair of these GPUs on this node is connected with a NVLink connection, while the CPUs and GPUs communicate through a PCI Gen 4 bus. So it's a highly performant node. Uh, with that, we move on to the uh, programming environment. So the programming environment is very similar to what is available on the on the CPU node, except we have some uh, specific modules that are available or are loaded onto the GPU nodes when you have to build your code for the GPU, uh, except that everything is same as Eric explained. So all the module tricks that he shared, you can still use them on the GPU nodes. In fact, the code will basically be built on a login node, so everything will re remain the same. Uh, over here, I'll try to talk about the differences uh, that are and that you must be aware of when you're building for the GPU nodes. Now, if you uh, log into your terminal on Perlmutter and you do a module list, some, so th something like this will show up. And you can see that by default, we have this GPU module on number 18, you can see loaded. So when this is loaded, the system is configured or the environment has been configured for GPU codes. And if you are looking to build CPU code, then you will have to unload this. But by default, the, this module will always be there and we are assuming that you're building for the GPUs. Now, what this does is it loads some additional modules. For example, the CUDA toolkit and the CREAPY Excel NVIDIA AT module. But these modules are required uh, for, for building uh, for GPUs. And by default, you can see that the environment is the GNU environment. Uh, there, there is a thing known as the CUDA VAR MPI. And, uh, if, you're, if you want to utilize that feature, we'll get into the details of that. You want to make sure that you have the GPU module loaded. And once you have everything set up, it's recommended that you use the compiler wrappers to build. Now, uh, Eric talked about compiler wrappers in detail, and I'll also give a few examples of that. Now, by default, the compilers that are loaded are the GNU based, and uh, you can access any programming environment or the compilers that are loaded using the compiler wrappers. For example, if I have the GNU uh, compiler, uh, compilers loaded, I can check uh, with the compiler wrapper CC, the capital CC with, doing, with the dash dash version. And you'll see that the underlying compiler is G++. Similarly for uh, the C, C language, you can do the small CC and you can see that you will have GCC available. Now let's say that you want to use a different compiler. Let's say programming environment NVIDIA, you want to use the NVIDIA compiler, then you do the module load programming environment NVIDIA, and then you can see that some changes happen in the environment. And if you do the CC dash, dash, uh, dash, dash version, you'll see that we have NVC++ uh, NVC++ showing up. 
Now this is the NVIDIA compiler. And uh, do not use NVC++ directly, always use the compiler wrappers. And why this is important, we'll see when we go into the hands-on exercises. It's basically because the compiler wrappers link to many libraries that you don't know where they are located. And uh, if you try to do everything manually, it will be a lot of work. On uh, Perlmutter, we, we support several GPU programming models and uh, we have almost support for everything available there. Uh, there are certain programming environments which suit better for certain, it just suited better for certain programming models. So this is a list of our recommendation. If you're working with a CUDA code, it's recommended that you use programming environment NVIDIA, uh, naturally because uh, CUDA is NVIDIA's uh, proprietary. Uh, but let's say that you have an application that uses uh, the GNU compilers. Uh, uh, you can still use those, but then you will have to do a separate compilation. You will have to make sure that your CUDA code is built using the CUDA toolkit or the NVCC compiler. We have a hands-on exercise about this as, uh, as well, and I'll, I'll point this out when we get to that. Cocos is a, a C++ library, uh, can be presented as a C++ library. So anything that supports C++ and has the uh, uh, the backend support for the GPUs, uh, you will be uh, you will be able to use that programming environment for it. Uh, then we have OpenMP Offload. It's if you are looking for portability across different types of GPUs, this is one of the most uh, you know recommended programming model. Uh, if you if you have a code in OpenMP Offload, it will work on uh, NVIDIA and AMD or even on Intel GPUs. On Perlmutter, we are supporting it using the programming environment NVIDIA, and there are options in programming environment Cray that also allow you to uh, build the code. That's in the OpenMP offload. And when we go to the Open ACC model, uh, on Perlmutter, we highly recommend that you use the uh, programming environment NVIDIA because that has the best support for this. And then uh, we have the, the standard C++ uh, parallel library support as well through the NVIDIA programming environment. To summarize all the last three to four slides, uh, if you have a source code, it does, does not matter what it contains, either the GPU directives or MPI or, or, or like a Fortran code, we recommend that you build it using the compiler wrappers instead of using the underlying compilers. For example, if you have a C++ code, uh, you use the capital CC compiler wrapper. If you have a C code, you use the CC. And if you have the Fortran code, you use the FTN wrapper. Now, this is also regardless of the type of programming environment that you are using. It doesn't matter if you have a GNU programming environment, Cray or NVIDIA, you always stick with the compiler wrappers because they, they will take care of the compiler that is to be used and the libraries that are to be linked in. Now, the exception would be a CUDA kernel. If you have CUDA kernel inside a .cu file, then uh, the, the famous method is to use the NVCC. Uh, but on Perlmutter, we have programming environment NVIDIA, which contains the NVC++ compilers, and you can even build the CUDA code with them directly. You just have to pass the appropriate flag. And we have also a hands-on example that explains this nicely. Now with this, uh, we move on to the hands-on exercises, and that is where the bulk of uh, information will come from. Uh, you, you may already be aware of this link. Uh, this, uh, there is a GPU directory uh, in this repo. And if you CD into that, you'll see a long readme. That readme is basically kind of a uh, lab manual for, for, these training, uh, for these exercises. And you can read through it. I would suggest that you open it into a separate window and open all the code in your terminal and you know, read through the readme and uh, try to follow the steps in the exercises. There is no, uh, it's not kind of an assignment. You don't have to do anything on your own. You will, you will be perfectly fine if you just uh, follow the steps. Uh, and uh, I would highly suggest that you uh, open up the make file and look into it. Just ignore the code for now because code is just like a boilerplate uh, vector addition code. Uh, but uh, make file is what's important. Just look at what compilers are being used, how compilers are being used and what uh, compiler flags are being used. Uh, so what's covered in these, these exercises? We start off with a simple CUDA code. We try to make it more complicated. As we move forward, we add MPI into the mix. We try to build the MPI plus CUDA code with different types of programming environments. Then we talk a bit about the, the CUDA where uh, example, where you are able to communicate between two GPUs across node directly. 
And then uh, the, the GPU affinity, just like uh, Eric explained, the CPU affinity, we, we also have uh, affinity issues on these nodes. And finally, we have some exercises that talk about OpenACC and OpenMP on Perlmutter. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, uh, uh, there are two important files in each, uh, each exercise, a make file and a batch.sh file. Batch.sh file will mostly be the, the same, uh, very similar, uh, except when we talk about affinity. Uh, make file is the most important one. In, typically in a training, you would, you would think that a source code file is more important, but since here we are trying to learn how to use the programming environments and how to build your code. So the make file here it takes a present. Uh, the code, uh, uh, the source code would almost be the same in all the examples. So the, the batch file is basically uh, used for launching your job in, in an efficient manner. If you ad, get a dedicated node and try to run on it, you will basically be wasting time because a lot of time you will be spending you know, reading the file and building it. Uh, but if you run the file through the batch system, it will be uh, much easier. So uh, there are different options. Uh, th these may not reflect exactly what's written in the, in the batch file that's included in the examples. Uh, it's, uh, but the whole, the overall concept and then uh, the terms are pretty much the same. Uh, the dash Q option specifies the, the QS uh, or the quality of service or the queue that you want your job to go in. Uh, the dash capital N is the number of nodes that you're requesting. Dash T is the time in minutes. For example, this is five minutes. Uh, dash N is the number of uh, MPI tasks, the total number of tasks across each node that will be launched. And dash C is the, is the number of CPUs that you're requesting. Now, be mindful that for Slurm, a CPU is a hardware thread. For example, in the start, I mentioned that uh, each Milan CPU has 64 cores and each core has two hardware threads. So in total, we have 128 compute elements and, and Slurm sees each compute element as a CPU as, so the, it, it's the total number of CPU elements that you're requesting. And then we have the number of tasks per, per node. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's just very ex, uh, explanatory, self-explanatory. Uh, and then we have the number of GPUs per task. So this is the, uh, so basically you have four tasks per node and you have uh, one GPU per task. So that's the total of uh, four GPUs that you're requesting. And uh, for this, uh, for the purpose of this uh, exercise, you will be using ntrain2 uh, as your uh, allocation account. And uh, uh, your reservation would be pm underscore GPU underscore uh, December one. Uh, also, it's important to use the constraint GPU because if you don't, uh, that then you know you're not you're not requesting a GPU node. Uh, for the CPU nodes, you'll replace this with the CPU. So for the for all these examples, make sure that you're requesting a GPU node. Uh, these are some uh, useful uh, runtime environment variables. Uh, a lot of time it happens when you're working with the, with a GPU code, especially uh, with an OpenMP offload type of code, uh, because OpenMP also runs on CPU. So it's, it's important to know that the example that you ran actually used the GPUs. So if you set uh, these uh, variables to these given values, you will know what's actually happening. For example, if you uh, set this to, uh, to, uh, to two, that will tell you the data transfers that, that are happening. So when the data transfer happens between the CPU and the GPU. So there are multiple options, try to explore them. And uh, uh, this will also help you understand if your code ran on the GPU or it's, it, it's, it's running on the CPU. Uh, in the exercise one, uh, this is the simplest of all. We have a simple CUDA kernel and it has been placed in two different files. Uh, one file is named .cu, the other is named .cpp. And we first try to build the .cu file that contains a CUDA kernel that runs on the GPU with the NVCC compiler. This is a dedicated compiler for, for, for the CUDA language. And then we do the same exercise using the CC wrapper. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that you have the programming environment NVIDIA loaded because then this CC wrapper, uh, wrapper will be using the NVC++ compiler. And that is the only compiler that can build CUDA code when you have passed a C CUDA flag. And I would suggest that you then repeat the process by loading a different programming model, let's say GNU, and then repeat with the, with the CC wrapper and you will see that this fails. And that's good because that's what we're trying to look at. If you have a CUDA code, uh, you, you need to have the programming environment NVIDIA loaded, or you have to use the NVCC, the CUDA toolkit compiler uh, for building the CUDA code. 
Now, it, it rarely happens that you have a code that only contains CUDA and is all in the same file. Typically, you will have your application will be large and distributed across multiple files. And as a good practice, people try to keep all their code in a separate file, all, all, all their GPU code in a separate file. And that actually makes it easier. So let's say that you have a application that makes excessive use of CUDA and all the CUDA kernels are located in a separate file named kernels.cu. In this example, we just have one kernel in this file. So what you would want to do is you, you will either want to build the CUDA code separately using the NVCC compiler and then link it uh, with your application. Or you could just use the, the C wrapper with the programming environment NVIDIA loaded. Because we just saw in the example one that the NVIDIA compilers, they will build CUDA for you, even if it's uh, you know all mixed up in the actual code. But if in a scenario you want to use a different compiler, then uh, you can use this method where you can uh, build your CUDA code with NVCC and then use your, uh, doesn't matter what compiler, even it can even be GCC or GNU compiler, uh, you will still be able to link it. So this is this example covers that. that. Uh, in the third example, we uh, include MPI in the mix. So in this example, we have MPI and CUDA code all in the same file. Uh, and uh, there are, and the best way to do that, because if you use NVCC here, NVCC compiler will not recognize MPI. And that's why you will need to use the compiler wrapper that comes with the programming environment NVIDIA. Now, this is again, one of those cases where it will only work if you use this particular module and you use the compiler wrapper, because then it will be uh, linking in MPI and CUDA both. Uh, in the fourth example, we again come back to the separate compilation. Here we have uh, the the, MP, uh, the MPI library and we have the CUDA uh, kernels. Uh, but the CUDA kernels here are located in a separate file. And uh, you can again use any programming environment for this because you're building CUDA code separately using NVCC and then you're linking it uh, using the compiler wrappers. Compiler wrappers can again come from any uh, compilers. Uh, it's recommended that you use the compiler wrappers. You could still build the code if you were using, let's say, G++, uh, but then you would need to write a bunch of, uh, you'll need to link in a bunch of libraries. For example, CUDA runtime library is one of those that you'll be needing. And since you don't know where it will be located and what, uh, what are the paths you need to include, it's always recommended to use the compiler wrappers because they will take care of everything for you. And it will also you know, make the compilation line look much, much simpler. Uh, before we go to the next exercise, uh, this is a, a slide that's copied over from Eric's uh, slide deck. And uh, it's basically telling you the compute elements that are, that are available. So we can look at the rightmost column. It's the CPU on, uh, on the Perlmutter GPU nodes. Uh, as was mentioned before that uh, on the Perlmutter CPU, you have two of those sockets. And on the, on the GPU nodes, you have one of those. So everything is actually halved. Like the total physical cores is halved. The logical CPUs per physical core, which is the, which is the hardware thread, they still remain the same because they are located within the, uh, within the core. Uh, total logical CPUs per node is also halved and the NUMA domain is also halved. So we have four NUMA domains uh, while Perlmutter CPU nodes have eight NUMA domains. Uh, before we go uh, into affinity, I'll try to get this out of the way. So the affinity for the CPU uh, CPU cores is still the same as on the CPU nodes uh, because nothing has changed there. So it's recommended that you use the correct number of, uh, 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 you know, you assign the correct number uh, to the dash C option or the CPUs per task option if you write in the longer format. And to, to compute the correct number, you can use this uh, uh, equation. It's, it's pretty simple. 64 is basically the total number of uh, hardware uh, cores that you have on the node. And K is the number of tasks per node. So let's say if you had 64 tasks, like in this example, uh, the, in, the thing inside the braces would become one and you'll, uh, the answer would be two. And now two is the number of hardware threads that you're assigning to each MPI task. Now let's say that instead of 64 tasks per node, you had 32, then this would become four and you'll have four hardware threads assigned per MPI task. So it's important to have this right because you, you want to make sure that you're utilizing the resources best and you know, you're not pushing uh, too many 
MPI task onto a single core when you have more available. And to one way to uh, push that is to add the dash CPU bind equal to cores option. And uh, next we will look at the GPU affinity. Uh, now, as described before uh, on GPU node, uh, we have four NUMA domains and uh, each NUMA domains uh, contains a memory, uh, which is faster to access if accessed from within that NUMA domain. And across different NUMA domains, things become uh, slower. Uh, similarly, just like each do uh, uh, domain has its own memory, each domain will be assigned a GPU. So this is something, it's uh, what, what it looks like on the GPU node. We have four NUMA domains and each NUMA domain gets a GPU. Now let's say that you had a MPI task which was residing in NUMA domain, let's say zero, and it was assigned a GPU or, or it was trying to communicate with a GPU that was assigned to NUMA domain three, then naturally it will have to take a longer path and things will slow down. So it is important that MPI tasks are assigned GPUs that are closest to them. And we'll see how to do that. So in exercise five, we have two batch scripts. There is a batch script uh, rec and a batch script uh, close. The, the rec batch script is just the regular way of running things. Here, uh, the uh, every uh, we don't specify any affinity. And what, what will happen is that every rank or every MPI task will be able to see all the GPUs that are available on the node. And uh, in a typical application, when, when each rank is able to see multiple GPUs, we assign one GPU to each rank in a round robin fashion. Those of you who have been actively developing or porting their codes to GPUs would be aware of this. Now, what that does is it does not really care about if the GPU that is being assigned to a certain task is closest to it or if it lies in another NUMA domain. To make sure that you're getting the closest GPU, you have to specify this flag, dash dash GPU bind equal to closest. And uh, this has been demonstrated in this close dot such example. Now, when you run the code without the, uh, the GPU affinity set, uh, you'll see something like this printout. You can see that the rank one is able to see four GPUs and it randomly or round in, in a round robin fashion assigns a GPU to itself. And uh, we print out the, the PCI uh, ID of that uh, GPU to differentiate uh, you know, what GPU is being assigned to what uh, uh, rank. But it does not really care if it's the closest. And you can see that every rank can see every GPU. But if you relaunch the same thing with the GPU closest affinity set, you will see that each rank is able to only see one GPU. And that is the GPU that is closest to it. Now, how do we know that it is the closest to it? So when, when you run this example, uh, some information about the node topology will also be printed out. And we can use that information to see that we are getting the closest GPU. Now let's look at this orange highlighted region, the, the rank five. And uh, you can see that it is residing on core 33 and it has been assigned GPU number 41. Similarly, rank four, which resides on core 32 has been assigned GPU number 41 as well. Now let's see uh, where these cores uh, reside actually, the core 32 and 33. From this, we can see that core 32 and 33 reside in NUMA node two. And if we go to NUMA node two, we can see that the PCI, I, PCI bus ID or the GPU ID that has been assigned to that node is also 41. So this all lines up. You can, you can, you know, you, you can run this multiple times on multiple different nodes and you can try to verify that it is actually working. And then you can try to run the example where we don't use the GPU binding and try to compare the results. And uh, then we have the CUDA aware MPI. So uh, NVIDIA has this uh, uh, thing uh, known as UVA or the Unified uh, Virtual Addressing. Uh, what it does is it, uh, it allows the program to see the CPU and the GPU memory in a single virtual space. Uh, and what this makes possible is direct communication between two GPUs. Let's say you have two nodes. Uh, for example, in this case, you have node one and two and you want the GPU one to send a message on GPU one on node two. Typically what will happen is that this message will be first sent to the CPU memory on, on the parent node, then it will be sent to the CPU of the, of the target node, and then it will be sent to the target GPU. So that's a longer path. But if you have the CUDA aware MPI option available, you can send the message directly from one GPU to the other on a remote node. And that is a facility that we have available on Perlmutter. Uh, the the, the Cray-M pitch build that we have, it targets this, uh, it utilizes this underlying technology 
and it gives you the performance uh, that that is capable of direct communication. Uh, now, how to use this? So as, as I sh uh, showed before that by default, a GPU module will be loaded. Now this module does a lot of things. It loads other modules and also makes sure that there are certain environment variables that are set up for this type of the CUDA where MPI to take place. And uh, if you have this module loaded, you don't have to do anything else. You will just build your code as usual and uh, everything will be taken care of. Uh, sometimes you may be running into issues and the first thing that you would want to check is was your executable CUDA where MPI capable? And, uh, and you can simply check the type of libraries that were linked in. You can do the LDD on the executable or the library that you have uh, that you're using and you'll see that you'll have this uh, library, uh, you, sh you should have this library linked in. And uh, if it is, then uh, that means uh, it was built for CUDA where MPI. And then there may be some other issue and you can you know check with us about that. So example six uh, tries uh, to explain this concept. There is a simple example that shows you how to do this. It sends a message to the GPU located on a remote node and uh, tried, tries to verify, verify that the message was received correctly. Uh, and then in the ex uh, exercise seven, uh, we uh, explore OpenACC and OpenMP offload uh, methods. So these are two programming models other than CUDA that you can use to target GPUs. And uh, this, this example contains the same kernel that previously we had in CUDA. In the, uh, in the other example, and just rewrites them in OpenACC and OpenMP. So you can you know, compare and contrast these three kernel and see how these three models differ from each other. Uh, uh, over here, we have tried to keep OpenACC and OpenMP code in the same file. We separated them using if def statements. So you can you know, easily compare and contrast between those two. Now uh, there are, uh, you, can, you can use, so for OpenMP, you can use programming environment Cray as well. Uh, and uh, for OpenACC and OpenMP, they both can be built using programming environment NVIDIA. Now, this is the model that is recommended if you want to target these two. But if you have a, some, you know, serious dependent uh, dependence on Cray programming environment, uh, then you will have to go with the OpenMP. Now, in order to build uh, code for OpenMP, you need to pass the dash MP equal to GPU flag to the uh, CC wrapper of that's uh, contained in the programming environment and media. And if you want to build for the uh, for OpenACC, you will pass the flag dash a CC. Uh, and uh, if, if the example, uh, so within the exercise seven, there is an example that also explains how to use OpenACC uh, and uh, in Fortran uh, using the Fortran wrappers. So you can also look at that if that is of interest to you. Uh, that, that is all uh, from my end. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think we have some, some time left. So you can try to walk through the, uh, the exercises, the hands-on exercises, and we will be available here to, to answer your questions. Thank you very much.